my channel. I really didn't think that I would get such an elaborate security team. I mean, you know, Tyson. Something is happening. This time at the trailer park, menacing mechanical monsters strut their stuff and show helpless humans where to get off. They melt. They mangle. And they take the law into their own hands. Like Energizer bunnies with bad attitudes, these bad boys keep going and going and going. Draw. Try to pull the plug and you'll only piss them off. Shut down. Shut down immediately. Only rust can stop them. Trailer Park presents the mechanical madness of... Yo, robots! Are you ready, robot? Ready, master. Good. You may begin with his eyes. <laughs> Davis, and this is Trailer Park, the program that celebrates Hollywood's classic sci-fi coming attractions, or trailers. In sci-fi tradition, the future has always been a place where labor-saving machines have allowed mankind to savor that good life, whether that means anti-gravity cars that get three light years to a gallon, or titanium-based weapons with the power to vaporize neighbors when they play the stereo too loud, and who hasn't longed to have a mechanical manservant? Just ask Dr. Morbius, whose Robbie the Robot helped create the futuristic wonders of a forbidden planet. Based on Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, this sci-fi classic is perhaps the most famous space movie ever made, and the trailer's not bad either. as one of the crew of this faster-than-light spaceship of the future, sharing their curiosity to know the unknown, their tension, their readiness for inconceivable adventures. Sir, we're being radar scanned. United Planets Cruiser C-57D, J.J. Adams commanding. Who are you? Morbius of the Bellerophon. Well, Dr. Morbius, my orders are to survey the situation on Altair IV. Commander, if you sat down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. When you reach the Forbidden Planet, you will meet Dr. Morbius, played by Walter Pigeon. The Doctor is sole owner of this fabulous world. Anne Francis is his alluring daughter, Alta, who has never seen a young man till she meets Commander Adams, played by talented Leslie Nielsen. Come on in. And bring my bathing suit. What's a bathing suit? Oh, murder. You will meet a charming character in The Robot, able to produce, on order, ten tons of lead or a slinky evening gown. Always at your service. It must be the loveliest, softest thing you've ever made for me. And fit in all the right places, with lots and lots of star sapphires. Star sapphires take a week to crystallize properly. Would diamonds or emeralds do? You explore all the wonders of a vanished civilization. You travel deep down into the heart of the forbidden planet to discover the incredible marvels of this lost genius race. These magnificent scenes in striking Eastman color stagger the imagination. 20 miles. Look down, gentlemen, are you afraid? 7,800 levels. 
Yet the wonders of the planet Altair IV conceal a strange and evil force, unknown, irresistible. Forbidden Planet turned Robbie the Robot into the sci-fi's first mechanical superstar. He was honored by having a toy designed after him, he was featured in television guest appearances, and he starred in this second major feature, The Invisible Boy. Get the Pentagon, Class A emergency. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are expecting the call. The rocket has just been entered by a robot. It lives. Life. Consciousness, a machine? It intends to put itself section by section into orbit around the Earth. And that day, forever forward, Earth will be its slave. A boy made invisible by mysterious scientific force. Held in the sinister power of the berserk electronic brain machine developed by the boy's father, famous scientist, Dr. Tom Marino. You have 58 hours. If at the end of that time you have failed to supply the required information, the boy will be destroyed. Top scientists and brass from the armed forces confer on the emergency. One by one, they are trapped and microscopic transistors implanted in their brains. Each one of examination by Dr. Bannerman. May one ask why? Because at least two of us here, and maybe more, have one of these surgically embedded in their skulls. Which means they're completely under non-human control. Dr. Marino, you have been informed of the situation. My robot is already in space, and your son is completely in his hands. Marino, I direct your attention toward the television screen. You and your wife will remain here, and you will be obliged to look and listen. Are you ready, robot? Ready, master. Good. You may begin with his eyes. <coughs> that can rule the Earth. Here's the first big motion picture, hot from the headlines of science in the sky. Don't miss The Invisible Boy. Every all-American boy in the 1950s wanted his very own robot buddy. Some of us still do. Robbie was a kid's best pal. We'll meet more of Hollywood's heavy metal hunks when Trailer Park returns. <laughs> Trailer Park will return in a moment. <laughs> Billed as the man-made monster with every human emotion, Tobor the Great. Of course, only adolescent boys knew the secret of Tobor's name. That's it. It's robot in reverse. Not as visually sleek as Gord or as stylish as Robbie, Tobor was just as large and powerful, combining science with the soul of an adolescent. Here's how he was introduced to matinee audiences in 1954. 
war, the most amazing, the most fantastic creation of man's mind. Oh, he looks alive. For Tobor can live where no human can breathe, in the airless atmosphere of outer space. And the nation first to conquer space controls the world. Electronic scientists have designed a practical spaceship. Atomic power makes space travel possible, needing only the most valuable of all secret scientific achievements, space conquering giants that man can control. Tobor is alive. For even though much work remains before he's completed, he is already a sentient being, a necessary adjunct to the recording of all experiences our human space crews may later encounter. Since we cannot get in to see Nordstrom's secrets for ourselves, we must induce him to come out and tell them to us. They have no news of Professor Nordstrom or the boy. Neither has the Los Angeles Police Department or the FBI. I take it you want the formulae for my extrasensory transmission method. Gramps, don't you tell him! Don't you do it! Please, don't you tell him! You win. Tobor bringing you chills you've never known before. Tobor, the most human outer space man ever seen on Earth. Be sure to see Tobor. Of course, when there's not a young boy around to keep a robot in line, just about anything can happen. But a lot of little boys were crushed by the energy-sucking terror of Kronos. <laughs> A gigantic astral body hurtles towards the Earth to terrorize and seal the doom of an unprepared mankind. How can we prevent it? A job for the Army. They've got the guided missile, the nuclear warheads. Intercept and destroy it before it strikes. Design, this death dealing meteor plunges into the depths of the sea. And in its place emerges an awesome monster such as human eyes have never seen. Unless stop somehow. Others will land and suck the Earth dry of all electrical and atomic energy resources. Now, you're the only one that knows, and you will never tell. A metallic vampire stalking the Earth. Its purpose, to drain it of its energy, every last bit of vitality. Cronus, absorbing all the dynamic strength of this universe to make him so powerful as to withstand any force. Young boys who loved robots in the 1950s grew up and became disaffected disco baby boomers in the 70s. Their taste in mechanical men changed as well. They became almost human, too human. You'll see when Trailer Park returns. <laughs> Everybody talks about the future. Some do something with it. Machines are built to do man's bidding. But that does not mean that they have to enjoy their work. When a whole town of robots rebels against their human oppressors, a fantasy vacation can short circuit in a major way. Ooh. Sloppy with your drink. You talk too much. He needs his mama. I said you talk too much. Why don't you make me shut up? Kill him.
Bobby? What do I think you want to do? Michael Crichton is one of the most successful 30-year-olds in the world today. A graduate of Harvard Medical School, Crichton left medicine to become a writer and become one he did with such bestsellers as The Andromeda Strain and The Terminal Man. It comes as small surprise then that Michael Crichton has decided to direct a movie of his very own. Action! Crichton's first directorial task is Westworld, an action-adventure film for which he wrote the script. Up, up on the velvet. Crichton's Westworld takes place in the imagined future. People have become bored with the standard two-week package tour of Europe. They want more from their vacation. Those who can afford it go to Westworld. The orientation on the resort will now begin. Western World is a complete recreation of the American frontier of 1880. Here it is possible to relive the excitement and stresses of pioneer life to the fullest. What makes West World unique are its citizens. Be they cowboys, saloon girls, all are robots. This robot population is controlled by an enormous complex of computers. You can activate it five nine. And activate the saloon fight. <laughs> Injured robots are taken to a vast underground repair center where technicians work through the night, repairing them for use the next day. Draw. Oh, my God. Shut down. Shut down immediately. The relays must be frozen. Cut the robot power. Power cut. Shut down. Shut it all down. Well, when Trailer Park returns, a salute to sci-fi's ultimate robot. And I mean, ultimate. Trailer Park will return in a moment. <laughs> One of the greatest science fiction films of all time. Directed by Robert Wise, the man who had earlier edited Citizen Kane, and he would later helm West Side Story. But in 1951, he made moviegoers look inside their hearts as a visitor from space brought mankind an unsolicited message of peace backed by the power of a robot called Gort. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon, the arrival of a space ship in Washington. The Army has taken every precaution to meet any emergency which may develop. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. give you these facts. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. He's a robot. Without you, what could he do? There's no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the earth. All vehicles, close in. Let's go. Steely self-control. Unlimited power and the ability to do complex mathematic equations without counting fingers. Robots possess many of mankind's most cherished traits. But is a mechanical man a worthy ideal? Just ask Trailer Park's resident commentator, Nicholas Meyer. Robot is a Czechoslovakian word meaning indentured servant. Used for the first time in science fiction in 1924, when playwright Carol Capek decided it perfectly described the mechanical creatures in his play, 
R-U-R, Rossum's Universal Robots. Like people who have been stripped of their humanity, robots have no ego. They operate with rigid predictability, trapped in routine, without the release of imagination or inspiration. Ironically, mankind's traditional paths to enlightenment require a sacrifice of ego as well. But the key distinction between man and machine is the recognition of the ethereal, the anima born of a divine spark. In other words, consciousness. One cannot help noting that in almost all stories and movies in which robots or robotic creatures play a part, the robots do ultimately take on human attributes. They do, like Hal in 2001, or Robbie the Robot in Forbidden Planet, anthropomorphize. That is to say, they become human, sort of, like Lassie. It's oddly touching to see that mankind cannot imagine a creature without feelings of some kind, even if that creature is merely a machine. I guess a robot without a susceptibility to emotion would be, well, pretty predictable. That's the reassuring message of robot movies. They remind us that even in the most mechanical moments of our lives, we are still driven by and accountable to our consciousness. And in the end, only mankind has the ability to make the wrong choices for the right reasons. I have never met a robot I didn't like. They do what you say, and they never complain. And when you're in a, in a dangerous situation, they watch your back. Yes, vice presidents are just like robots. Until next time, this is Tom Davis reminding you that you never know what's coming unless you watch the previews on Trailer Park. Kalatu Parada, Nick Two, and good night.